A bridge hand is made up of 13 cards from a deck. Find the probability that the hand has at least three aces. All right, so trying to find a probability. And we're counting, you know, I'm going to approach this from a counting standpoint because I'm, I can figure out the number of ways that I have at, at least three aces. So I'm going to first figure out n of e, and then I'm going to figure out n of s. I'm just kind of kind of thinking through the steps I'm going to be following. Um, we want to find at least three aces. So we, I'd probably want to figure out exactly three aces and then exactly four aces. And I'd want to add these two numbers together. The number of ways I can get exactly three aces and add that to the number of ways I can get exactly four aces. And that'll give me the number of ways I can get at least three aces. Um, as far as the counting techniques I'm going to be using here, um, this is, I mean, obviously this is a uh, drawing a, uh, a hand from a deck of cards. Um, so that one might give you a hint as far as what counting technique we're going to use here. Um, but it is without replacement. And order does not matter. Because all we care about is whether or not we have the cards in our hand. I don't say the first three cards are aces. I'm just saying we get three aces in general. So this means these two things in combination mean we're dealing with combinations. Okay, so to figure out the number of ways that I could have exactly three aces in my hand. Well, there are four aces in the deck, and if I'm drawing three of them, that would be four choose, way, four choose three ways that I could have exactly three aces. But I don't just draw those three aces. I also draw 13 more cards. There's a 13 card hand total here. Three of those are aces, and ten of them have to be from the remaining cards. And how many other cards are there in the deck? There's 48. So we get 4 choose 3 times 48 choose 10. And I'm multiplying these because of the multiplication principle. For each of the number of different ways I could draw the aces, there are this many ways I could draw the remaining cards. So that's the number of ways I could draw exactly three aces. Now I'm going to add that to the number of ways I could draw exactly four aces. And that looks quite similar. But now I'm saying 4 choose 4, because from the 4 aces, I'm drawing 4. From the 48 non-ace cards, I'm drawing 9. Again, I need a 13-card hand, so that would be the number of ways I could get that 13-card hand. N of S... Um, actually, before I move on, I'm going to actually get a number here, because some people like to actually have numbers. Um, frankly, I'd be fine if you just left it written like this. Um, all right, so 4 choose 3 is 4. Uh, 48 choose 10. I'll ask the calculator that one. That is some rather large number. Yeah, this is the problem with doing these things um, as numbers. Plus, 4 choose 4 is 1, so I don't need to do anything there. 48 choose 9 is... It looked like it was another large number, but it was a little bit dwarfed by the fact that, you know, this is way out to the tenth. Um, we did end up modifying the second digit there, um, so something times ten to the ninth. It's still a number a lot of different ways, but the number of ways that I could get um, exactly three aces kind of dwarfs it a little bit. Um, so this is, I'm going to go ahead and say approximately equal to 2.78... 4 times 10 to the 10th. So that's a rather large number. Uh, the total number of hands that you could draw, this is going to be an even larger number. There's 52 decks, 52 cards in a deck, and we're drawing 13 of them. So 52 choose 13. 52 choose 13 gives us 6.35 times 10 to the 11th. 6.350 times 10 to the 11th. And if we're drawing, I mean, actually here, let's do this exact first. If we want to say the probability of E, this would be 4 choose 3 times 48 choose 10 plus 4 choose 4 times 48 choose 9 over 52 choose 13. So like I said, I 
I think that this is the preferable way to write this particular probability, even though we don't really get an, a sense for how big it is. But it will communicate that you, you knew the, the counting techniques a lot better than if you were to just write a probability, just write a decimal down. Um, so if I was to do this um, 2.78, I'm going to write some extra, ac extra accuracy on here, 7839970022. Um, I could write times 10 to the 10th, uh, but you can actually do the E character on this calculator. It's uh, above the comma here, this E right there. Um, so E10. That's my numerator, so I'll then divide that by this other number, my previous line, so I'll just use answer to be to get it in there. And we get uh, 0 0.0438. So despite dealing with some rather large numbers, you know, something to the tenth, uh, times 10 to the 10th power and times 10 to the 11th power, despite dealing with those rather large numbers, this probability ends up coming out to be, um, I guess, a 4%, uh, you know, a little bit less than a 4% chance. Um, if you keep in mind that a 5% chance is a 1 in 20 chance, then that kind of puts this into perspective. You know, 1 in 20 hands, almost 1 in 20 hands, you'll get at least three aces in your hand. That's an interesting uh, probability to think about, I think.